let us see another example we have to find out the equation of motion and hence the frequency of a system as shown in the figure and we have to use the energy method now as you can see here we are having two linear springs and this is the rod and at the end of the rod we are having the torsional spring whose stiffness is kt so linear spin they are having the stiffness of k and the distance between this point and this particular point is l now if you give the displacement to the rod in the downward direction and suppose it is displaced by an angle of theta and if this length is l as we have seen earlier then this small distance by which it is displaced is l theta now as you can see now this is the important point because this rod if it is displaced in the downward direction this spring will get compressed and this spring will get elongated as you can see if this is the compressed position it will try to restore to its original position so therefore a restoring force will be in the upward direction and as this is elongated it will again try to restore to its initial position so here also the restoring force is in the upward direction so for both the springs the restoring force is in the upward direction so this is the important point when this rod it is displaced then there will be a twisting of this torsional spring and it will try to restore back to its original position so both these things we have to take into consideration so suppose k is the k is the stiffness of this particular linear spring that is equal to spring force divided by deflection that we know so k will be equal to f upon x so spring force will be restoring force will be equal to k multiplied by x and for this torsional spring kt will be equal to so restoring torque as this is winding of this particular spring will take place a restoring torque will try to unwind it and will try to restore it to the its original position so torsional stiffness is equal to restoring torque torque per unit angular deflection so restoring torque divided by angular deflection so restoring torque t upon theta will be the value of kt so if you cross multiply t will be equal to kt into theta the most important part is so as you can see restoring force they are acting in the upward direction for both the springs then because of this there will be as we are moving it in the downward direction the inertia torque i alpha or i theta double dot it will act in the opposite direction then total restoring torque will be equal to now this is the restoring force multiply by perpendicular that is l distance that is l so kx multiply by l for this top spring and for bottom spring also kx multiply by l so kx multiply by l kx multiply by l force multiply by perpendicular distance that is nothing but the moment so kx is the spring force and perpendicular distance is l about this point suppose we call this as o point then kx into l for the upward spring for the top spring and for the bottom spring also kx multiplied by l now restoring torque already we have seen that is offered by this torsional spring so restoring torque is kt into theta so moment or torque we have calculated so this is the direction of motion to this direction of the motion inertia torque will be in the opposite direction and restoring torque will also be in the opposite direction to that of the motion to restore the spring back to their original position that is torsional spring as well as the linear spring the most important part is the application of the parallel axis theorem so just we'll see the parallel axis theorem which we have already seen in our strength of material is that if you are having a rigid body and this is the central axis and if the perpendicular distance is h between any other axis ab which is parallel to the axis xx then we can say that moment of inertia about axis ab is moment of inertia about the axis passing through the central that is ig plus area multiplied by square of the perpendicular distance between these two axes
So it is IG plus AH square. So IAB will be equal to IG plus A multiplied by A square, where IG is the moment of inertia through the centroidal axis. So to this AB, parallel axis is XX. So it is IG is nothing but IXX in this case, and area of the rigid body and square of the and the product of area and square of the perpendicular distance between the two axes that is ah square the same principle we are using over here so again we'll go back to the previous slide so if you want to find out the moment of inertia about o then axis passing through this axis about which the oscillations are going to take place when the rod is displaced by very small amount in the downward direction it will start doing the oscillations like this so parallel to this is the centroidal axis that is y y axis so moment of inertia of this slender rod or thin rod is ig that is ml square by 12 and mass moment of inertia we have to consider so mass multiplied by square of the perpendicular distance between two that is n by 2 and square of that. So instead of area here we are considering the mass moment of inertia. So instead of a h square it will be m multiplied by l by 2 square because l by 2 is nothing but the perpendicular distance between these two axes. So here the oscillations are taking place about this axis and therefore we will have to find out the moment of inertia about the axis which is passing through this. So moment of inertia about y by axis of this rod is ml square by 12. This is m as it is l by 2 square of that is l square by 4. So 12 is the LCM as it is in the denominator. Here we we'll have to multiply by 3. 4 3s are 12. So it is 3 ml square plus ml square that is 4 ml square by 12. So it is ml square by 3. Now we will derive the expression for the equation of motion over here. So as you can see, i theta double dot plus kx multiplied by l plus kt theta is equal to 0. So this is the equation of motion which we are having. So it is i theta double dot plus kx into l plus kx into l that is 2 kx into l plus kt theta is equal to 0. Now in place of x we can substitute l theta so this is i theta double dot plus 2 k l square theta plus k d theta is equal to 0 so we can say that this is i theta double dot plus take theta common from these two terms so it is 2 k l square plus k d bracket complete theta is equal to 0 now as we have seen that using parallel axis theorem we have obtained the value of i and that is ml square by 3. So that value we can substitute in equation 1. So in place of i we can substitute the value that is ml square by 3. So this is our equation 1. So in place of i we can substitute ml square by 3 which we have already calculated using the parallel axis theorem. So just substitute that value. So we have substituted the value of i that is ml square by 3. Now we have to compare this equation with the equation of SHM. So it is second order differential equation. So it is theta double dot plus omega square theta is equal to zero. So omega square value is equivalent to this particular term. So we can say that omega square has to be equal to 2k L square plus kt divided by ml square by 3. So omega will be equal to square root of this particular term. So it is 2k L square plus kt divided by ml square by 3 radian per second and value of omega is nothing but 2 pi multiplied by frequency so it is 2 pi f and the rest of the terms are as it is you can take 3 in the numerator so this 3 will go in the numerator so we can say that value of frequency will be 1 upon 2 pi transfer this 2 pi term on this side so it is square root of 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by square root of 3 2 k l square plus kt divided by m l square in hertz. So in this way we can derive the expression for the frequency and equation of motion.